This week on Tingham Topic, the celebs are fighting. Yes, Monique is getting into it with one of her pairs yet again. This is Monique and D.L. Hughley, a fine line between voicing your problem and being the problem. Hello, 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 Kim K viewers, and welcome back to another week of Tingham Topic. And this week, you know, I might have to say quickly that I'm so blessed to have friends that I could actually have intellectual conversations based off of things that happen in entertainment. And shout out to Krishan for this episode because it was inspired by him. Because this week, rather than just focusing on the celebrities and what's happening, we're going to speak about something that takes it a step further. Of course, this is based on what happened last weekend with Monique and D.L. Hughley when Monique took to the stage in Detroit, Michigan and basically went on an entire rant against D.L. Hughley about being a headliner and not being a headliner and just the way she went about it. And you know, during the conversation, it got us to thinking, is there a way in a professional situation to go about voicing your opinion, sticking up for what you feel you are owed or you, your worth or what you would deserve in the industry. So that's what we're going to be speaking about. So to start things off, let's jump into what happened. So before we start, we have to give Monique her flowers. She is a queen of comedy. She's been for a while. She makes us laugh every single time. <laughs> And no lie, she made us laugh. This time with D.L. Hughley. Take a look. Start attacking black women. What kind of real nigga is that? That's a bitch nigga. That's a bitch nigga. What kind of real nigga would ever attack a goddamn black woman? A bitch nigga. I feel sorry for D.L. Hughley's family. I feel sorry for his motherfucking wife. Cause how do you suck the dick of a coward? I tried to play fan, bitch. I tried to play fan, nigga. I tried to play I mean, what she said was foul, but her running across the stage in that manner is hilarious. That's what that does make me laugh like crazy. But there's a deeper issue at hand. So what happened in Detroit, Michigan? Before she went on stage, she went on this entire rant speaking about D.L. Hughley, that the fact that he would not take to the stage unless he was the headliner. And there was some argument about what a contract said versus another contract. And she went on an entire rant, belittling D.L. Hughley, criticizing him of his masculinity, his sexuality, all these different things. And in response to Monique's rant, D.L. Hughley went on his radio show the next day and gave a very calm, level-headed response to Monique in which he said many things like this. It's apparently false, it is ridiculous. But the thing that, that was really the most annoying, the thing that was really the most bothersome is after a, a, a terrible couple of weeks where people were being slain in Buffalo, where people were being slain, kids were getting slain in school, and people had come to a comedy show to get away from all of their problems, you besieged them with yours. The one contract that isn't in dispute is the one that the audience had with us to entertain them. But every single time, more and more, you spend half of your time talking about your grievances and what you didn't get and who did this to you. Listen, when you burn things up and you sit back to watch the results of them, she's literally set that stage on fire said the most incendiary things ever, and I had to go on stage. If she has a temerity to call me a coward, a coward would have left. Now, mind you, we want to make it very clear. D.L. Hughley is no angel either because for some time now, D.L. Hughley says problematic things and has been saying problematic things. And with that being said, it's very interesting that D.L. Hughley said that the role that Monique played in Precious has become her autobiography because you have to sort of agree because let's look back to everything that has happened. So the first thing that happened with Monique that after she won her Oscar for her role in Precious for Best Supporting Actress, she sort of became blackballed by Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels, all who were involved with Precious, Tyler separately. 
she went on she voiced her opinion what it was she did not want to be a part of the press tour you know go to cons and all these different things that were tied to the movie but i'm sorry when you are in this industry you're playing a game it's politics involved and that sort of comes with the territory you have to attend these film festivals to be able to promote the movie and she said i was not doing it and of course in typical monique fashion she voices her opinion in a very bold and brazen way and it turns people off and it rubs people the wrong way and which causes people like steve harvey to come out and then she comes back and says to him that you're a coon fast forward a few years and then it was a whole issue with netflix and monique speaking about her payment from netflix and what she was worth and that netflix went on and she goes very public about these things that's another thing you know no matter what you're not supposed to go publicly and speak ill about your experience at a professional environment you go you are you should be private about those things and then deal with it behind closed doors i'm just saying i'm just saying and then fast forward to more recent times lee daniels and monique made up and now she's going to be in his netflix movie demon house and then fast forward to now with dl hughley and Monique going at it. So there's sort of a pattern going on. And now we're here at this point, which is the larger topic. The fine line between voicing your problem and being the problem. Now I was on the fence about doing this topic because I have fallen into the ways of this country. Identity politics. And what we have to recognize is I wanna treat this in a way that is respectful to identity politics, but also calling things for what they are. And by identity politics, I mean, oh, we are silencing a black woman. D.L. Hughley is a black man who is beating down on a black woman. And something that D.L. said that was very true. Many things that he said. There's an angle that Moni comes from when she addresses these issues. She turns what is the issue into something personal and starts attacking people's character. She likes to weaponize black femininity that D.L. Hughley says, absolutely. Everything is, what type of bitch nigga? What type of man? And yes, black women, like they said, like many artists say in their art, black women are at the bottom of the totem pole. And so for that reason, they have to fight socially for them, for people to see who they are. And for that, I understand that. But in the same breath, it's the way that you go about it. In every situation, if you realize, and also Monique loves to bring up you as a black man, you as a brother, but yet everybody that she attacks is her fellow black people. She's gone against, again, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, Lee Daniels, Steve Harvey, Charlemagne the God, forgot about him, and now D.L. Hughley. She doesn't have too much to say specifically about any of the executives. Yes, she attacked Netflix as the entire brand, but she singles out people and picks parts of their personal life and uses that as ammunition against them, which is terrible. And it further leads into the topic of how do you go about speaking out in professional environments. That is not the way to do it. I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, don't burn your bridges. Well, I feel like every single bridge that Monique walks over, she ends up burning them. She truly does. And again, repeating something that DL said in this entire conversation earlier on, in the industry of entertainment, it is not what you have done. It is what you do. The fact that Monique hosted the BET Awards back in the 2000s, she was a queen of comedy, she did Precious. Those were in the noughties. That's nothing that she's done really in the 2010s have been too notable. And you're demanding things based on that. It's good to have that fighting power in you, but I believe that when you are working with people, you could be the t most talented person but if your attitude is disgusting and stink, people aren't gonna wanna work with you. Like the great Wendy Williams said, 
She'll take second best with a great attitude over the best with a horrible attitude. And that's what it is. And at the end of the day, people are humans. These celebrities are humans. When you are humiliating people and embarrassing them on public platforms and play, putting a spotlight on their characteristics, then how do you expect people to react? Everybody can't always be the bigger person. Not everybody is Michelle Obama. Not everybody's going to go high when you go low. There are many people who are just waiting for that opportunity to go lower than what you went. And I still haven't really answered the question, have I? How do you go about solving professional problems? Well, it varies. It depends on whether you're in the corporate America or if you're in entertainment. At the end of the day, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And how you treat people is very important. And not to put the spotlight on me, but this is something I'll never forget being back home in the Bahamas and working as a bank teller and serving people day after day. I'll never forget this, what a lady said to me and it spoke to me and it stuck with me for years to come to this day. And that's been a decade ago. She said to me, Chet, the world is your oyster because you know how to treat people. It's why certain celebrities, you don't understand why they are where they are. But some of these people that you might not see as talented are where they are because they know how to treat people. They know how to manage people. They know how to handle people. And the reality is, Monique, like people say, if she wants to use that black women are at the bottom of the totem pole or people want to say that, well, then we need to be realistic about it. If you know that you are a black woman at the bottom of the totem pole, I'm not saying be pushed over and be stepped on. Because again, there's a fine line. You speak up for yourself. But is there's a way in how you do it. And if you know that you are socially in a category that you are at the bottom of the totem pole, then you need to be a bit strategic. And something since that Monique likes to go on about is she likes to tell people that, or men especially, that you are weak. You don't stick up, you don't stand up for women, you don't do this, you don't do that. But uh, this might sound crazy, but there is strength in what is perceived as weakness. For example, if somebody stands in your face and insults you verbally, oh, well, especially in the black community, if you don't fight back or say something back, you are perceived as weak. When in actuality, if you don't actually say anything and restrain yourself and not let that person get your energy, that is actually stronger to me than fighting back and throwing your fist and cursing somebody back. But some people haven't reached that level yet. And with that being said, it's starting to get to a point where I feel as though Monique is not satisfied unless she sees one of her bridges burning. I mean, Lee Daniels just repaired a bridge, you know, fully financed the reparations of that bridge. <laughs> and now she's come back and burnt another. I feel like we need to realize that when dealing with professional situations, we must always go about it with a little bit of discernment and discretion. Heck, not even a little bit, with a lot. And like DL said, he's now learned his lesson. Many people were telling him not to do anything professionally with Monique, but he's like, oh, no, 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 I want to give her a chance. And now he's been burnt. And people, it's just like in personal situations, when somebody comes to you and tell you about, oh, well, this person, you should watch out for them because they're X, Y, and Z. And as much as you can be that person, well, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I like to tell people, oh, you know, let me make that decision about who they are. But at the same time, when one or two people are saying the same thing negatively about a person, you can't help but use what is being said to protect yourself. Because like they said, a smart person learns from their mistakes. A wise person learns from the mistakes of someone else. Okay? <laughs> Monique, you are an incredibly talented lady. You have 
done so many great things in entertainment. You deserve respect. You know, and it's terrible that you've experienced what you have experienced. And again, not putting this on all on Monique because DL Hughley has said some very problematic things. His mouth is very sticky as well. His tongue is sticky, he says very foul things from time to time. But yes, there's a time and place with how you deal with it. But yes, at the end of the day, his words might be cruel towards you, whatever he said in the past towards you. But by reacting to him in this way, you're only making things harder for yourself. He goes on, does his radio show, comes back with a rebuttal that sounds very articulate, very calm and collected, and it makes you sound like the angry black woman. And that's just the reality. But yes, with our, my final thought, I have to say that the way that you go about dealing with any time you have a professional situation that you need to speak up about is you're, you need to be smart and strategic about it. You don't go off and take something professional and turn it into something personal because that same personal is going to come back to you and affect you professionally. So with that being said, thank you for watching Kincaid viewers. I am so, so happy every time. You guys stay till the end of my videos and watch it. You communicate through either the comments or you reach out to me on social media. I really appreciate it. I do. It's such a blessing and I hope you continue to be here with me for the entire time for as long as I continue to do this. And you know, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on your alerts and follow me on social media and also comment here on YouTube in the comments. Let me know how you feel. And if there's a topic you want me to speak about, let me know. I'm very much looking forward to it. And until next time, KK viewers, take care. <laughs>